I mean, being on set with Snoop Dogg, though, man. Yeah. I mean, Snoop said that B. Mickey was his favorite Baby character in this thing, yep, man. Yep, I, I wish I wish I had, like, a tape recorder so I could, like, <laughs> you know, have that as proof. But, yeah, man, he said that. You know, I remember I called him. Uh, it was his last day on set. I think yeah. it was filming season one. And um, he was leaving out of his trailer, and I was getting in my car, getting ready to go home with my driver. And uh, he had a flight at the time, and I wanted to just get a picture. I didn't have any scenes with him. Yeah. Um, I didn't really, the only time I really was close to talking to him was on a table read on Zoom on my MacBook. Yeah. So, like, seeing him in person and just, like, just feeling his essence and yeah. just... Yeah, it, it was fun, and I was like, "Yo, like, honestly, God, I don't, I'm not saying I want to be on death row, but like, if I can spit something for you real quick." <laughs> he was like, "Quit playing, man." Yeah. I was like, "Nah, honestly, like, you're you're a legend. And I love you." He was like, yeah. "You don't even know you're my favorite character, man." My I God. was like, "Yeah, that's what's up. Can I get a picture?" He was like, "For sure, for sure." I was my like, God. "All right, that's what's up." And did he pass you the blunt afterwards? Ah, <laughs> you know what's crazy? Um, no, he didn't. He was he was actually literally getting ready to get in the car to go okay. to go to his you know, flight. So he yeah. had to catch a flight at that time, which is crazy. I didn't, I didn't catch him with a blunt in his mouth yeah. or in his hand. <laughs> he always have it, you know. Pass the slip prior to smoke, too. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, have you been able to talk to 50 during this time, man? Um, I, you know. He's like he's like Casper on set. Yeah, you know he's here and there, but when he's there, he's very hands on. He's down to earth. Um, I respect him because he knows what he wants. Yeah, um, coming from an environment that's so foreign from the entertainment business as far as film. Yeah, um, him being a rapper, transitioning that to being an actor, mm. and then moving that energy into being a director and producer is phenomenal. Yeah, and then just being around him, just being a sponge and absorbing that energy. Um, it was just really cool to meet him and just work with him, and uh, he has like such a sinister smile though. Like when he, <laughs> like it's it's very intimidating when he smiles at you. But you know it's all love. Uh... Exactly. <laughs> the brotherhood on set though, man. I mm -hmm. mean, what is that like? The camaraderie. Shoot, not even a brotherhood. It's like a family reunion on set with mm -hmm. everybody. Every time you come on set, it's like a family reunion. We yeah. be playing spades in between cuts of scenes. Yeah. You know, talking shit. You know, with Russell Horns <laughs> being Steve Harris. Um, it, it's it, it's it's great. I feel like that's what makes the story so like authentic and just yeah. real and grasping because everybody on set fucks with each other so much, mm -hmm. and the chemistry is there. And when the chemistry is there between actors and actresses, mm -hmm. and the relationship is so like healthy, it, it, it just moves the scenes so you know smoothly. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, and that's very it's rare. It's yeah. rare you find that. It's yeah. rare you find that. Um. And, and and both Meech and DaVinci were like big brothers from the, to me. Yeah. And just like, you know, mentors. And uh, I appreciate them too. Being on set, though, can you feel the tension from the scene on set? And does it transfer to the television screen when you go back to watch it? Tension from the scene, like, like pertaining to what? Like, what you mean? Like, if you got to go kill your girlfriend and you think to yourself, this is about to be a stressful ass day today, and then you watch it on the show on television. Do I like relive it? Do you relive it? But then also, do you feel that same energy from being on set, off set when you watch it, uh, watching the replay of everything? Like my feeling towards it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I could say the main scene that I still have feelings for towards is when I killed Kato. Yeah. When I killed my baby. Um, I really <laughs> didn't I, I really didn't want to kill Kato in yeah. real time as Miles yeah. Truitt. And B. Mickey, I feel like he didn't want to do it too, but he yeah. had to... Um, Sustain his loyalty, yeah, and um, also just survive. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Like yeah. it wasn't just really the loyalty, but if he didn't kill her, he was gonna be the next. Exactly. Um, and then I felt some type of way about that too. Like it would've been cool to have another female in the group. You know, just seeing how long we could, you know, pursue that type of story. Mm -hmm. um, having that love interest type of side of the story and making yeah. it, you know universal all around as a, as a, as a show mm -hmm. and not just all killing and, and, and yeah. family and stuff like that but um the fact that there is a female and there's love you know what i'm saying and the back end of it mm -hmm. um that would have been cool to have in bmf you know yeah. you have lucille you have charles you have their relationship but you got the the triangle effect with uh titties on his back <laughs> you know what i'm saying so uh it would have been cool to just see a real love story you know yeah. in the midst of all the mayhem exactly you know 
Do you watch the show at home when it comes out with everybody else? Or are you like, you know what, I'm all out from this show. I ain't watching shit. I watch it by myself. Okay. I watch it by myself. I like to investigate. I like to see what I can pick up on, what I didn't do, um, what I did do well, mm-hmm. um, what I rushed on. You know, mm. I watch a lot of movies and you know there's lines, but they don't rush them. Yeah. And when you rush a line, you rush a beat, you rush a moment. Yeah. Um, when there's pauses, like in real time, like, yeah. like we're having a conversation now, it's it sounds real. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But when you just said exactly, that would have been a line. But if you mm. would have said it too quickly, it would have sounded robotically. Uh, so like that's how I really like, you know, just the science. pick up. You know, that's mm-hmm. just the science of how yeah. I watch myself. And I, I don't really, I, I watch it with my family, but mm-hmm. that would be probably like the second time I'm seeing an episode. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know I what I mean? You. I but it's, you. We, it's always the second time when you see something else that you didn't see the first time. Yeah. So. Stranger Things and BMF, going from the gangster world to the supernatural, what is that like making that change every five minutes? That's crazy you said that because I was filming season one of BMF the same time I was filming season four of Stranger Things. My and God. Let's say I was on set for BMF Monday through Wednesday, and Thursday, Friday, I'm on set for Stranger Things. You know, uh, it was it was fun just trying to, like, Diverse myself between the yeah. two characters. Um, you have a, a character that cooks crack, is a gangbanger, that, that kills, <laughs> he fucks, he, he cusses, he does all that. Then you have this pretty boy, basketball, <laughs> small forward. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nin- 1986. Yeah. You know, but that's cool too. That it wasn't hard. That it wasn't challenging to you know what I'm saying to depict, depict between those two characters because they were in the same time Man. zone too. Yeah. So I was listening to the same music. I was yeah. still in the same clothes. I was yeah. I still had the same swag, you yeah. know. So that really helped me like mix the two characters together and make sure it wasn't too challenging for me to go back and forth from back, you know what I'm saying, each each each, each other character. Yeah. But um yeah, when it came to Patrick, you know, I was doing a lot of things on Stranger Things that I wasn't doing on on BMF, like doing stunts. Like there was one time where they built this thirty foot. It's crazy. They built it in this um, what 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 are the, what, what's it called? A studio space. They they built it in this studio space, a thirty foot water tank, and they had mm. eight scuba divers scuba divers in it, and they built a set underneath. And like if you look underneath the water, there's like a whole built set. Yeah. And the whole theme of season four was there was an underworld. Yeah. And that was basically the underworld at the time. And um, my that was like my killing scene. I get pulled under by um, the whole antagonist of the story yeah um i get pulled under the water and i come back up and my body just like is dismantled and everything <laughs> and um that was really that was a really cool scene that was like that whole scene was one week my god just to get that one scene so um that was that would be that that's like the difference between you know stranger things and yeah. bmf but yeah personally though man i mean that was an exciting and busy ass time what was it like being that damn busy was it a dream come true for you saying okay i am out here working in this thing Mm -hmm. or was it a bit overwhelming at the same time it i want to say it was i don't know i don't know because i feel like i never really realized my blessings until like somebody's telling me Mm. i'm going through it right then and there you know what i'm saying i'll be just be living life and I'm thinking that it's just supposed to be coming towards me yeah. and, until I see myself on TV, mm-hmm. you know, or until I tell, hear somebody saying, oh, you're doing such a great job, or I just watched you. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, I'm working. I'm I'm, I'm progressing. I'm going towards yeah. something in the future. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm doing something with my life. Um, and then what was the second question you asked? Oh, uh, was it overwhelming? <sighs> Mental stability as an actor, that's big. Break uh, that down, man. Like I said, 14, 12 hours, you're portraying somebody that you're not every yeah. day, all day. And um, being able to sit and just mental stability. So that's 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 my big part of acting because I got to know myself. Mm-hmm. I got to know what I like. I got to know who my family is, who my yeah. peers are, who is in my circle. Yeah. You know, I can't be influenced by my characters and what they do because yeah. that's something that I am acting. That's something that is a, a facade, you mm-hmm. know. So, yeah. 